Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me, it's Shawnee Wan, and joining me as always, it's John. John, we're going to talk about Game of Thrones, the TV show, which we haven't really touched on in a while. You were saying off air, there isn't like a whole lot of spoilers or impact news coming from the set, it seems no, like. No, there, there has been much. But it's, there's been a couple of like behind the scene and then like filming some flaming swords. A few weeks ago, there was like there was a pic where there was what appear to be three characters with three flaming swords. Uh, and there's stuff now definitely with uh, the set of King's Landing and who's there. Jack and Hagar supposedly be there. The actor who plays him was seen near a hotel near the area. The actor who played Rhaegar Targaryen was also seen in that hotel area. So it looks like there's going to be some sort of flashback again in Season 8 involving Rhaegar. The Night of the Laughing Tree story, maybe hmm. Robert Baratheon, the other Robert's Rebellion, maybe. But even that stuff, it's not like a spoiler. It's stuff we figured they might show, and it makes sense that they would show it. HBO seems to be doing a much better job with Season 8 than they did with Season 7. Right, and I and I still think, I mean, like a couple months ago, we had the picture of John and King's Landing with Cersei and the director. I'm still not positive that just wasn't a purposely shot photo to get people talking. Okay. I'm still not 100% positive that that's actually taking place. I think that maybe they just said, yeah, let's, let's put John and Cersei together here in King's Landing and get it leaked as a decoy, as a diversion. The interesting thing about this, for me at least, spoilers are spoilers. You know better than anybody else. If it's out there, you're the kind of guy that wants to know what's going to happen. You can't help yourself. Some people are better. Some of the kids that work for me, they avoided all of the Avengers Infinity War trailers. They didn't want to know anything at all going in. I could see not reading spoilers if I know that they're there, but skipping a trailer altogether, I don't know if I could do that. I guess I'm more in the middle. But HBO with Westworld, a lot of fans figured out the key spoilers in season one. So for season two, instead of trying to one-up what they did with season one to make a bigger spoiler, a bigger twist. Instead of trying to hide the spoilers from the audience, they released a series, I think they were just like web-only trailers for season two, before the season even came out. Mm -hmm. And if you watched it in a certain way, or if you looked at certain clues, you could learn all of the spoilers, all the twists that were coming in season two. And they did that with the idea that if if it's out there, people are, are less likely to spoil things. It's like when the movie comes out, you know, Avengers came out, and people give it a little time before they talk about the major plot points freely. But before the movie comes out, when people are speculating or making guesses based on trailers, you know, there are no rules. It's like, oh, I think this is going to happen. I think that's going to happen. Whether they're right or wrong, they don't mind putting it out there. But when it's out, they give it the respect of, of allowing people to see it. So I guess HBO is looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. So... In regards to Game of Thrones, they're definitely doing a better job with security, but there's no way that you can stop the people that seem to just live outside the King's Landing set. They're always there posting photos on Twitter, and there's so many of them. There's only so much you can do, so instead of working so hard to avoid these people, maybe that's what you do. Maybe you put out fake photos. Maybe you film a few different endings. And that's not unheard of in TV shows, to film different endings to prevent spoilers. but if people want to know, they're going to find out. I mean, there's ways. I'm actually surprised that there haven't been more spoilers. Right. Me, me too. I, at this point, I thought we'd get... You know, we've had the leaks, but it's like, which leak is right. correct? And what were even the origins of those leaks? Because I think you told this to me, or maybe I read it on Westeros, but the way that the actors are reading the scripts, they can't read it until they're on set or they need... Like with an iPad. Right. You, you need a code. You need a special like password each day, and the password changes every day. Right. So like you go in there one day, the password's one, two, three, four, five, six. The next day, it's one, two, three, four, five, five. You know? One, two, three, four, five. 
<laughs> the same combination I have on my luggage. <laughs> Damn. I got a couple of non-spoiler news items that I wanted to discuss with you. And then I figured we could do some spoiler items towards the end of the episode and use those to sandwich what is the main event of this episode, which is our definitive list. We cannot go back on this. This is our pick for every single character asterisk that we can think of that's still remaining in Game of Thrones going to season eight, whether they live or die. Is that it? Is, is that all we're saying? Live or die? Or? Yeah, live or die. Okay. There is no there is no middle ground. You either live or you die. You win or you die. So that's what we got going on today. And we want to do this now because we really don't know what's going to happen. Well, the spoilers the spoilers are likely to come. Right. We didn't. We want to do this now so we can't say we had the spoilers and it's easy to say, oh yeah, well he dies. Good. We want to go on record before being just as much of the loop as everyone else is out of the loop. Yes. I mean, some of them are kind of like, you know, are, are pretty simple and some of them aren't. Yeah, obviously, some are gimmies, but yeah, some of them are going to be really, really tough. And I still don't even know. There's like four or five of them. I just, I had, it's killing me already. Yeah. But we'll get to it. Just a couple things to talk about as far as news and they're non-spoilers. So mostly they are involving your hero and mine, the American J.R.R. Tolkien, Mr. George R.R. R. Martin. and. I have to say, the timing of, I don't know, man, the timing of a tweet I put out on the Prince's Promised account, I feel is pretty, it was bad timing, I guess. Or, or I feel bad having, basically, I put out a tweet slamming George R. R. Martin. Not that he read it, just because. Am I going to laugh at this? Oh, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if you, uh, if you, uh, if you read this. I'm going to actually bring it up. I've been scared to bring it up because basically, I feel like I tore George R. R. Martin apart intelligently and like two hours later <laughs> our my our, friend our, Gardner died yeah <laughs> our biggest conspiracy theory was proved wrong like two hours later <laughs> well later are we sure George didn't read that comment on Twitter and said I better have this guy die off <laughs> <laughs> All right, plot twist, Gardner. We're going to kill you off. <laughs> I, felt, I felt so... I don't know why I felt so bad, but I, I, felt, I felt very bad. Oh, I laughed. I hate to say I laughed, but I laughed at home because yeah, I, I just know. thought about there. It goes, here it is. That was the Gardner first thing I was... The... First thing I, I... I couldn't help but chuckle the first thing. Well, well, here's the test now. In the next, like, coming months, when he starts, like, Mentioning another publisher that's been a friend of his for so long that's some like weird obscure name. We know it's a fraud all along. <laughs> it was just bad timing, you know. But basically, my tweet I tweeted them at GRRM speaking, which is his official Twitter account. This is a five part tweet. It's odd, but here is our takeaway from Solo. A Song of Ice and Fire began with the Game of Thrones in 1996. 20th Century Fox and Lucasfilm released a retooled special edition Star Wars trilogy, all within seven months of A Game of Thrones being published. Since March 1997, George Lucas wrote, produced, and directed the prequel trilogy. He also became disenfranchised with his craft and decided to retire. You released four more books in A Song of Ice and Fire, which would ultimately become your legacy. Since The Dance with Dragons, the last entry to your far-from-finished saga, Lucas sold his completed saga to Disney. They, in turn, released two parts of a new sequel trilogy and two spin-off films based on the property. You and Lucas seem to be on a similar path. Like Disney with Star Wars, you are going back and picking through your work like a vulture. The difference is, you weren't done with your saga, and you are your own Walt Disney. Also, Lucas finished his story, while HBO will finish yours. But no worries, the Ice Dragon movie will probably feel just as sweet as how finishing your 22-year-old story would have felt. See you at the Hugos. I mean, he'll never read it. I feel like if he did, I might tweak him a little bit. But regardless, like an hour and a half, two hours later, you text me that Gardner and Dufault died. Just... <laughs> that Sean <laughs> He's my best friend. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, the good news with Gardner Dufault dying is... 
I don't know. What is the good news with this guy dying? Well, there's de- there definitely is not going to be George kind of like, hold on, let me finish this book for Gardner. He wouldn't want me to finish the series. Knowing him, this will just give him another excuse to be depressed and not finish the book. Dude, you know what? I feel like Gardner Duvois was like his buddy who was like, ah, don't worry about the fucking book. Here, help me edit this fucking collection of short stories. So he's really doing an Ice Dragon movie or something? Yeah, so that, that, that was the lead in, uh, initial lead in news was the Ice Dragon, and it's going to be an animated film. And oh, I guess how he's playing this is that he, he holds this story near and dear to his heart. So it's like his own, this is like his, uh, Medean. Did you, you didn't watch, uh, fucking, what was that stupid show? It gets so bad. Uh, Entourage. No. This is like what he's most passionate about is the Ice Dragon. Deadline Hollywood reveals that Warner Animation Group, part of the Time Warner Multimedia Conglomerate, which also happens to own HBO, has struck a deal with George R. R. Martin to produce an animated version of The Ice Dragon, his 1980 fantasy novella. Despite marketing claims otherwise, The Ice Dragon is not part of A Song of Ice and Fire. He's noted to have a producer credit which is fairly standard for such adaptations, but I also saw, which could not be accurate, but I have read a couple articles that say that he is going to not write it, but help to write it. That's really what led me to send that tweet. Not that he's, like I said, not that he's ever going to read it, but, you know, I was in a real fuck you George R. R. Martin mood. And of course, that's fucking when Gardner Duvois has to... It's such a weird thing that he died of, but let's talk about the Ice Dragon first. John, are you excited about the Ice Dragon? <laughs> I'm as much excited as the ice dragon as I am about going to work tomorrow. Oh, man. You know what? Let's just say this right now. At the current way things are standing right now, I'm almost 90% positive George Armar will not finish The Winds of Winter. Okay. I'm getting there. We both are positive that he's not going to get a dream of spring done. He's not going to finish this story. He just not. He, he has. To me, you can't tell him otherwise he's not interested. He's given up on it. Yeah, he's gotten bored of it. He's got he has no way of connecting all the dots that he's added in, and he's not going. He he's lost interest. Well, I don't know if it's so much that he lost interest as he's piled too much extracurricular shit upon himself, and he has written himself into a corner. He doesn't seem like he's embarrassed, but he's got to be embarrassed. Yeah, forget about it. He doesn't care. He's making money. That's all he cares about. Money. He's got the money now. This is his money. You know, all those years he didn't really make a lot of money, and all of a sudden his the big dance, and now all of a sudden he can't finish anything. I don't know if you read this, but this is straight from George R. R. Martin's mouth, and uh, I, I meant to talk. I meant to talk about this. I think the last time we spoke, but it just made me so angry. I kind of pushed it out. It's in his comments on his fucking not a blog. I believe it was his fire and blood. I'm not going to go looking for it. I'll try and find it later. But basically what he said was, and I believe it was in one of his comments, is talking about the winds of winter, how it's still his priority. But then he mentions some famous authors who never finished. Yeah, yes, I saw that. You saw, I that, saw one, that, right? Yeah. That got me pretty heated when I saw that. Um, I mean, it will never get to a point where I don't want to buy these books if they do come out. But you know what? Honestly, I'll see how I feel when Game of Thrones is done. Because this guy is... As far as I'm concerned, he's burned all his goodwill. I'm a pretty understanding guy, but this is fucking ridiculous. All right, let's go on record. Fire and Blood, we know it's coming out November 20th. Does Fire and Blood Part 2 come out before the winds of winter? Yes. <laughs> no doubt, right? No doubt in my mind. Okay. Do we get Fire and Blood Part 2 in 2019? Yes. You think so? You don't think we wait till 2020 for Fire and Blood Part 2? Well, he, he, has to have a, he has to have something come out each year. He's not getting one's winter out in 2019. I'm convinced. Yeah. Doesn't even feel like he has any notion. He, this, not like he's even, doesn't even feel like he's even close anymore to writing this book, to finishing off this book. He says he doesn't want somebody to finish it for him posthumously, but I almost feel like we'd have a better chance of that happening if he died. Somebody's going to finish it. There's, there's money to be made there. I don't know. It's very sad, but does the does the Ice Dragon movie come out before The Winds of Winter? Yes. <laughs> oh man! And uh, Fire and Blood. Are you the least bit excited about that? Don't care. Not at all. Not even about some sweet Targaryen history. Nope. Don't care. Nice. If The Winds of Winter had come out 
Yes, I would. I would read it. Yes. Okay. All right. If the Winds of Winter came out, but Game of Thrones still finished before A Dream of Spring, would that have been okay with you? Yeah, because it was really after 2014. I was going to be expected the way the pace he was going. Yeah. You you just thought he'd get the Winds of Winter out before they finished up the series. I would have bet my life that he would have. I'm glad I didn't make that bet because I (laughs) I definitely would have bet my life that he would have gotten the Winds of Winter out before. Before the series finishes. Any other George R. R. Martin news? An evening with George R. R. Martin in San Francisco. Because, fuck it. He's got tons of time, right? Worldcon 76 is coming to San Jose in August. But a couple days prior to this, the Science Fiction in San Francisco organization has put together a special event. An evening with George R. R. Martin, an award-winning artist, John Picaccio, who I guess is doing his either his calendar or he did the artwork for Fire and Blood. No, Doug Wheatley did the artwork for Fire and Blood. Listen, I'm not excited for Fire and Blood because he doesn't deserve that, but I'm going to get it, and I'm going to read it because I just like Westeros. I like Targaryens. I like, the, I like the fake history. I can't not buy it out of anger because it won't make a difference. But part of me does hope that not too many people buy it. Like, a lot of people bought A World of Ice and Fire because he had all that goodwill at that point in time. He doesn't have nearly that much now. So I'm hoping the sales are like really like like solo, like I hope this right. is his solo. How, how I feel about solo. Yeah, I'm loving every second of it. Oh, I love it, love it, yeah. love it. Screw you, Disney, Kathleen Kennedy. Which we'll talk. We'll, we're going to talk about solo, a separate episode, which we will record later. All right, John, this was your idea. What made you think of it? I, as I said before, right there, just it'd be cool to do something kind of fun. And I just wanted to do this before we really start getting some, like, concrete evidence and leaks and rumors and, you know, leaked pages of script. Not to say we can pat our pals on the back. We can go back, you know, in, in a year from now or wherever it is, a year and a half from now, and say, listen, oh, we were right about that, we were wrong about that. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of these guys, not all of them, maybe not even half of them, but at least the major characters, we've talked about before whether they live or die where they're at at the end of the series. and. I don't know that many of my thoughts on them have changed. Have your thoughts on any of these guys changed a lot over the last couple of years, let's say, over season, since post-season six? Well, I'm just looking at like a temporary list I have right now, and I might change it as we go along tonight. <laughs> um, I feel like we're doing like a fantasy football draft. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't think any of them, I think pretty much this is going to be the list would be uh, maybe a couple of changes, maybe, but like you know, we'll we'll get. I don't want to give any names out just yet, but there's definitely a couple of them. Like, yeah, yeah, they're definitely gonna die. Two years ago, I was like, yeah, they're definitely gonna die, and that hasn't changed. What we did was we came up with a list of all the surviving characters that we could think of, and I think this is everybody. We do have one, well, a couple wild cards, one real wild card who may not even show up in the series, but we divided them into. Well, it was four groups initially, but we have five groups. We have the D group, D characters, D plus characters, C characters, B characters, and then your A characters, your main cast. And I guess we'll start from the Ds. Man, I might as well go D. A couple softballs. D and up. We'll say the character. You say live or die. I say live or die. Maybe we could do bonus points if you want to say if they die, how they die. But other than that, <laughs> there's not much. You know, if if they live... It's too hard to predict where they're going to end up. So it's just, are they going to live? Are they going to die? Bonus points for how they're going to die. So, without further ado, the official The Princes That Were Promised, The Watchers on the Couch, Game of Thrones, Live or Die list. Starting with the D list. And I don't know, it's a girl. I don't know her first name, but Little Karstark, who's now the head of House Karstark. I don't think it was a book character. And I'm going to say live, because the fuck would be the point of her dying? Shock. So I say, little Karstark. Alice Karstark. Alice, okay. I think that is a book character, actually. Alice Karstark, I say she lives. John? Dies. Wow. (laughs) Okay, all right. Little Umber, who's little uh, Ned Umber, right? Yeah, little Ned Umber. Yeah, the the new new lord of, of House Umber. I mean, if Alice Karstark lives, I'm going to say he lives. See, now that's, it's got me thinking now. Like, oh, God. I guess you can make a case for them dying. You know what? I'm going to change my mind real quick. I'm going to say Alice Karstark lives, 
as well as Nenumber lives, only because it shows out the show that there's, there's a future of these houses. Right. And they're going to be like the future of the houses. So I'll, on that moment, yeah, I'll say they both live. Okay. Yeah, I, I could buy that reasoning. If one lives, the other one's going to live. If one dies, the other one's going to die. They, they, I don't think it's going to be one and one. It's just, they're, be both, they're both doing something. They're both going to live or die. Little Car Stark and Little Umber, their fates are entwined forever, since John declared them the lords of their houses. Great scene, by the way. Oh, uh, awesome scene. Especially because Sansa was like, what? Oh, I love it. Love it. Uh, oh, we'll get to her. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I just think they're going to live because, honestly, I, I, I don't think we'll see either character ever again. So... They'll just live. Um, Jan Royce. Dies. Okay. We need some death. Yeah. I'm going to say... I'm going to say dies also. Oh, we forgot a character, by the way. Yes, we did. I'm thinking the same thing you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna, where do you want, you want to put him in D plus or C? I'll put him in C, I guess. All right. So we got uh, Sweet Robin. <laughs> just as soon as I thought, I said, wait a minute, we forgot someone. Yeah. Oh, we forgot somebody. <laughs> how could we forget <laughs> alright um, alright so that's the D list the D plus list the D plus list is a little bit on the tricky side let's start with Ed Tollett oh dude he's definitely gone actually dead he's probably already dead <laughs> <laughs> he probably died of that, the wall attack yeah no question no question about that alright and then here's a couple of wild cards these are the wild cards I was talking about because we haven't met either character in Game of Thrones yet, and only one of them we know is going to be in Season 8 of Game of Thrones. That is Harry Strickland, who is the Lord Commander of the Golden Company. Is it the Lord Commander or, or uh, Captain General? I think it's the Lord Commander. Whatever it is. Yeah, uh, don't fucking uh, matter. It's not going to be the, the Golden Company that we, that we know from. No, the- he has been cast in four Season 8, and uh, he's going to die. Yeah, I'm going to say he dies also. Uh, I think he'll be sticking around till the end. I don't want to get too much into spoilers. I'm not sure if he if he goes north. I would think he he hangs around. Knowing Cersei, I would think Cersei keeps him close as a form of protection. So I, I would think he'd be around till the end. But yeah, he's going to die. So here's the ultimate wild card. Because we don't know if he's going to be in this season. He hasn't been cast. And you and I were talking off air about how he hasn't been cast. And if he even needs to be cast or make an appearance at all. And that is probably up there with Arthur Dane as the most popular character who has not been in the books, except as told in story by another character. And that's Howland Reed. First off, do you think he's going to be in season eight? At this point, I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm going to say, shit, man, I'm going to say no also, just because he hasn't been cast. And they're basically done filming. Right. And they're really just really a reason why I say no is because they've done a, almost all of the RLJ stuff that we had to know stuff thus far that we think we have to know right. through Brand's flashbacks. I don't think there's going to be a reason for him to be there unless they just. But he's alive, and he's been talked about not as much in the show as he has been in the books. He hasn't been talked about since season three. Well, season six they talked about him. They showed him in flashback. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yes, that's true. I forgot about that. I don't know how I did. I forgot. Well, he, well here's my issue with it. If he's alive, he's the Lord of Greywater Watch. The Reeds are Stark loyalists. You would think he'd think he's in a fight against this war. Why Why would he just pull a no-show with anything? If you're not going to have him, just explain that he died off air, never having been on air. It's kind of tricky if you don't cast him. You don't have to. You could tell the story without him. The purpose we thought he had for many years, the cat's out of the bag. You know, and if you think about it, why have a new character come in and tell John who he is when Bran and Samuel can? And you and I know who he is, and maybe people who watch the show, even though they don't read the books, they watch the show religiously over and over again. Maybe they know who he is, but the average, you know, of the 13 million people watching Game of Thrones, 11 million of them, let's say, I have no idea who Holland Reed is, so it would just be confusing for him to come out of nowhere and tell John who he is. That being said, I feel like his fate does need to be explained with everything going on. But yeah, I'm going to say he's not in season eight, but if he was, I'm going to say he dies. John, if he does show up in season eight, does he live or die? Ah, uh, dies. He dies for that fucking cheap move he pulled on Arthur Dane. 
All right, well, that's about it for the D list. D, D plus. We're on to the C list, which is a much longer list and probably the longest <laughs> list we got. We got a lot of yeah. C players. Got a bunch of Cs. A, B, C in the top three. Well, I mean, let me let me go on record as saying I didn't think we'd have this many C characters left going into the final season, especially based on the way season six ended. I thought a lot more people would die in season seven than actually died. Yeah, they, they, they definitely left a lot of people open for uh, season eight to come back. No big deaths in season seven, right? What was the biggest death? Was it Bar- uh, Thoros of Mare? Thoros of Mare, Randall Tarly. Uh, well, Randall, Tarly only, Randall Tarly only got introduced, like, uh, Elena Terrell. Oh, right, yeah. Elena Terrell is big, pretty big. All the Martell girls, or the non Martell girls. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I can't think of anyone else that died. You could say Elena Terrell is probably, probably the most major death, but when Tommen jumped out the window at the end of season six, I thought. Viserion. <laughs> yeah, Viserion. I mean, some crazy stuff happened, but honestly, there's way too many characters right now. There's way too many characters left. Anyway, Sweet Robin. The Lord of the Eerie. I'm going to say he lives. Yeah, I'm going to say he lives too. What's your reasoning? It, it just it, it just would figure someone who's so weak and timid and useless and pointless will live. Do you think he has a hero moment? Possibly, maybe Sam and Sansa. Yeah. The reason I, I think he does, and along the same lines I think he lives, is because Littlefinger was playing him. Right, and it just feels like he's set up to be a ruler or something. Right. I mean, who, like, who's going to rule the area otherwise? I don't want to really speculate on that right now, but, like, you're just going to, like, like put Gendry to rule the area? You, you know, it, it doesn't... I want some semblance of what Westeros is to continue on when A Song of Ice and Fire is over. All right, I, I'm going to take a guess. All right, the next... the next, Unless you get something else on Sweet Robin and uh, Little Lord Robin. No, nah, that's all right. The Master of Whispers at King's Landing in Cersei's Small Council. Well, no. Now he's the hand to the king, right? Yeah, yeah the hand queen. to the queen. Quyburn. Moving up this fucking guy. Quyburn. Do you like Quyburn? Nah, uh, not really. I'm not a fan of suspicious people like him. What's he up to? But how about the way the character's portrayed and the actor? I like Quyburn. Yeah, he's not bad, I guess you can say. For what he is. Yeah, like, ex- ex- I was just going to say, like, you, you know what he's about. Like, you know he's, you know, he's in- into demonic things. Yeah. And he, he, he comes across a little bit as a sleep bag. What was his origin in Game of Thrones? I know it's. I mean, he was with the Brotherhood, not the Brotherhood. He was with the uh, the Brave Companions in A Song of Ice and Fire, but they didn't he was do found, the Brave uh, Companions. Rob and uh, Talisa had uh, found him at the at um, Harrenhal. Okay. All right. So they kind of they kind of merged his storyline to somewhat similar origin, and then he was there when Roose Bolton. Yeah. Okay. Well, Quiburn, I mean, listen, he played the hand he was dealt. He played it well. He accompanied Jamie. He saved Jamie's life by fixing his hand up as best he could. And then he parlayed that into kissing Cersei's ass for a couple of years. <laughs> now he's a hand to the king. <laughs> but yeah, he's going to die. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Bonus points for who kills him or how he dies. Dragon. Definitely dragon. He's, he's building all those dragon weapons until he'd be fitting right. that while the dragons burns him alive. Right on. Jorgon fucking chews him in half. Yeah. All right. Bran Stark's girlfriend. Mira Reed. Whose unwavering loyalty towards Bran is just... I don't get it. But she's very loyal. Will we even see her again, though? You know what? If we don't see Helen Reed, why would we see her? Right. I'm going to say she lives, though. She's been through enough shit. Her brother died. She had a drag. My brother died for you, Bran. She had to drag fucking Bran's ass for like <laughs> hundreds of miles. Strongest girl. Stuff. She's the strongest girl in one thing to us next to bring in. <laughs> yeah. Lives. You're saying lives? Yeah, I guess or, so. You think she might die? Remember, John, this is going on record. You can't go back on this. So She lives. All right. All right. This is definitely the toughest one by far. I split up these lists, A, B, C, but within the lists, with the exception of the A list, I think, there's no real order to it. So... This is the first real tough one for me, and it is Yara Greyjoy, or Asha, to those of us who have read the books. Asha Greyjoy will live. Yeah, I'm going to say she lives also, because... She's going to rule. Yes. It's going to be a girl power in the Iron Islands. Because her father her, and her uncles and her brother are fucking all idiots. 
And uh, I guess the moral of the Ironborn story, unfortunately, will be women rule, boys drool, I guess, kind of thing. I don't know. But Theon said it himself. He's going to save Yara. And we'll get to Theon later on. But the way he talked about going to save Yara when Yara had come to save him, it feels like that's something that he is going to accomplish, is saving Yara. Yeah. So, yeah, it lives. All right. Here's another one. Here's, here's another one that's kind of tough, John. Your boy, Grey Worm. Dead. The next. Definitely dead. I thought he was going to go last year. He was one of the guys I thought would go last year. I thought I thought last year they were going to take Grey Worm and Torment out because I thought they were trying. They were going to take one from each of like John and Danny's like, main component guys. You know what I'm saying? So right. I was shocked that he didn't die. He's the, he's a definite goner. I'm going to say dies also, but I'm not going to be surprised if he lives. That wouldn't shock me at all because... No, he's a definite goner. We'll get it when we get to Danny. He's the definite goner. Dude, I don't know, man. Like they, uh, Benny Off and Weiss seem to have a hard on for Grey Worm. Well, because I guess he does. He can't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, ladies week. and gentlemen. Have a good night. What was it, the episode of Seinfeld where George, like, like he'd get a laugh that he's like, thank you, I'm out of here. <laughs> Leave on a high note. Yeah, I hate that Grey Worm story has been so much bigger. Yeah. Um, same with Miss Sandy. Who, you know what, let's do Miss Sandy now. Fucking smoke show, bro. Hell yeah. You ever see uh, Idiocracy? No. Oh, you never saw Idiocracy? No. Dude. You gotta watch that movie. It's with uh, Owen Wilson's brother, Luke. Luke Wilson. Yeah, Luke Wilson. She's in it. She's in it. She's in it for like a scene. And like, I watched it before Game of Thrones even came on, and I was like, "Oh, that chick's fucking pretty hot." And then I watched it again after in the last couple of years. I'm like, "Oh shit, it's Miss Sandy." That's just a fucking funny movie. You like Beavis and Butthead, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Mike Judge, uh, Office Space, mm-hmm. yeah, Office Space. Yeah, definitely check out Idiocracy. Miss Sandy lives. I'm going to say she dies. Really? Yes. And I would not be surprised if Masande is... I'm still thinking that she could be a... Traitor. Traitor. Yep. Do they touch on the three betrayals in Game of Thrones? No, I don't think so. I mean, they talk about the first couple seasons because of Jorah, but they really don't go into... They really don't go into it. They, I think they're setting it up where they, they're, they're making us think that it, was, it, it, it varies. And now, like, the new thing is, is it, is it Tyrion? Is Tyrion going to set up Danny and John going back to Cersei? And if that's the case, oh God! I mean, really? Yeah, I, I don't like I don't like these Tyrion heel turn rumors. Yeah, if that's the case, then Tyrion Lannister actually would be the most villainous character in the story to do that. From how he started out to this transgression, and then to turn on Danny and or John in favor of Cersei, who want him dead, it's just going to make him, him the most unlikable character there is. It doesn't make any sense for that to happen. The only way I could buy that happening is if, like, Cersei would literally have to, like, make him think that she's in love with him. Like, Jamie would have to die. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. And I hate the, I hate thinking that. So you're going to say, you're going to say dies with Miss Sandy. And you're going to say she's a traitor. You know what? You very well could be right. I'm going to stick with lives. But you might be right. All right. The big man. The mountain that rides. Gregor Clegane. Known as Sir Robert Strong in uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. Dies. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got to die, right? Why, why would any storyteller have that guy live? Well, you know, I just really wanted to make a surprise and uh, keep my readers thinking that even the most villainous of villains. The only thing with Gregor Clegane is how do you kill him? I guess like fire or something, a yeah. dragon? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't see Sander Clegane being able to kill him. He's already dead. Maybe it's in the case of the dragons. Yeah. Maybe it's a combo of Sander and uh, Arya. I've heard that. I've heard that theory. You had one more. Gendry. Lives. Lives. Definitely lives. He's been through enough shit where... Uh, he will be the new lord at Storm's End. Yeah. I mean, who else is there? House Baratheon's extinct. Gendry Baratheon will be uh, legitimized and... What do you think? He marries Arya? That's a possibility. I don't know if Arya is the Marian type. All right. As much as I love this character, I think he should have died last season. Bronn. Ah, uh, he lives. He's getting those castles. Definitely getting those castles. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he dies. I'm going to say he dies because 
I'm going to go with the thematic justice, so to speak. You know, he's a sellsword. We like him kind of the same way we like Han Solo in A New Hope, but he's worse than Han Solo. He's done worse things. At least he says he has. And granted, everything he's done on screen has been somewhat heroic. I do think he dies. All right, the former Master of Whispers. The Spider. Lord Varys. Guys, no soldier pr- predicted it. He will die in Westeros. What'd you say? You and, you and I will both die here. Yeah, we'll both die in this land. Yeah, I'm going to say he dies also, but... Just they've made him such a fucking... Or have tried, I feel like they've tried to make him such a crowd favorite, especially the last couple seasons. Yeah, he dies. Fuck it. I'm going to say he dies. Although some people do need to live. It does I think so far, I think so far I have more people living than you do. Eh, I think it's pretty even. We'll do, we'll do the count up later. All right, we did Miss Sandy. Okay. The Lady of Bear Island. Leanna Mormont. Oh, boy. That's a tough one. Really? I, I feel like I have no doubt that she lives. She's too spunky to die. <laughs> well, it's, I guess this goes into the whole adage with the umber and the car structure that they're saying that they uh, have to have these young people, these young rulers are going to be the future rulers. Right. Specifically people, specifically people who will be... Um, loyal to... Regain loyalty to House Stark. Right. On the other hand, if shit's going to go real bad in the North, there's not that many of the Northmen... Uh, you know what, dude? I feel like we could have added to the D's, D pluses, fucking uh, Wyman Manderley and uh, whichever fucking Glover's still around. Yeah, I, well, uh, both the way, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about them. Actually. I, although I, I, I might have put one down when I was making my list, but I, I would say both of them are dead. Yeah, I'm going to say dead for uh, Wyman Manderley and. Yeah. At the end, they'll just be as new Manderley and Glover they make up. Kermit Glover, <laughs> you know. Gloverly. <laughs> <laughs> Which which fucking Glover it is it, it's um I don't know, I'm gonna put Robert Glover but I might be I might be wrong I always get the Glover brothers confused let me just write that S and J dies for him and S and J dies for him but anyway to my point um, if the North is going to get pretty much run through by the Night King there have to be casualties so that would be the case for the younger leaders of these houses to die. That being said, you do have the older guys, Manderley and Glover, possibly Helen Reed, and that would be enough death, I think. But I'll say lives. I'll say lives. Now, here, here are the top-notch C-listers, as far as I'm concerned. We're still on C-list? Wow. All right, two more for the C-list. Dude, that's what I'm saying. There's way too many of these guys left. That's why when you, ha- you come at me with a rumor like Jack and Hagar is on set, it's like, what are they doing? Why are they... Why are they bringing more fucking characters back into this? You know? Like, do I need to add Jack and Hagar to, to this list? Like, I thought the story was done. Or the Waif. The rumor of the Waif is actually Arya. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Super. That'll be a fucking plot twist. Uh, anyway, my favorite Tully, Lord Edmure. Oh, God. He lives, baby. He fucking lives. This pains me to say he's going to live. <laughs> I think he's going to live, and he's going to be, like, one of the great lords of the realm. He's going to get his due. He's going to do his time at Casterly Rock. And, uh, well, where the fuck is he now? Because he wasn't at Casterly Rock. He's wherever the plot needs him to be. That's right. (laughs) Westeros Subway. Yeah, I don't think Edmure Tully, he's had enough shit happen to him where he'll live. I think we talked about a rumor where Jamie inscripts the forces loyal to House Tully to help him in the north. Right, I was just going to say, do you think Jamie goes up north, he's going to be with Bronn, maybe it's like Bronn's going to follow him up, and also he's going to go to uh, Riverland and get his, the last forces there, and Edmure, and say, listen, we're going up north. We need your military I, expertise. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need we need that experience in cutting Tully wartime uh, decision making. Yeah. I was so impressed. So impressed what you did against my father. You took that mill. <laughs> Edmure Tully is going to be the House Aaron in season eight, <laughs> riding to save everybody. <laughs> it was this idiot running backwards. <laughs> yeah. Edmure is the wrong side. <laughs> no, don't charge us. You're helping the Night King. <laughs> All right. So the final guy for, for the C-list. I think it's like along the lines of Ed Tollett. That's uh, Lord Beric Dondarrion. 
Oh, he's a goner. He's a definite guy. He's, he's got the book. Yeah, he's the definite goner. Definite. Yeah, why is he around right now? Like, I, I think they just didn't want to do the Lady Stone art, so they just, they just keep him around. I don't know. Yeah. Really poor portrayal of Beric Dondarrion. They didn't get his character right at all. A little bit, but not really. And he's like one of those characters. Like, who cares? Yeah. All right, so that's the C list. As far as I'm concerned, too many of them are still around. Before we get into the B list, just looking at these characters. Ed Tollett, he should be dead already. Grey Worm should be dead already. Bronn, Bronn should be dead already. Ed Muir probably should be dead already. Beric Dondarrion should be dead already. Yeah, but these guys are still hanging around for whatever reason. All right, so the B-list, and I feel like this is where we're going to start to have our really, really tough decisions. And let's start it with a tough one. I'm going to let you lead off. Tormund Giantsbane. Goner, definite goner. Why do you say definite? He's just definite goner. Just that you have to kill someone from John's side. Somebody close to John. You have to make have John fear death again. But yeah, you got to make him fear it again. Yeah, all right. You have to have someone close to him die, like a like a loyal soldier died. Because we'll get into some other guys. I think so. Who will live that are around John? Well, his brother and his sisters, his adoptive rather brothers and sisters, cousins, former roommate, <laughs> Darth Helmet. You know what? As far as Tormund, I'm going to say lives, and I'm probably going to regret that, but I just don't, I don't want him to die. And I feel like Game of Thrones is getting soft with who dies. All right, here's another tough one, John. Maybe a couple of these are gimmies on this list, but the real lord of, of Bear Island. <laughs> this is this is a very tough one. This might be this is a top five tough one thing. It really yeah. is because I can really see it go both ways. Jorah Mormont. I could see him dying heroically, mm-hmm. but then at the same time, I could, I could also see him being the, maybe perhaps the new Lord Commander of the King of the uh, the Night's Watch, taking over with his father. You know, had, you know. Yes, but what would the purpose of the Night's Watch be in a post Night King Wildings in the North world? Well, maybe the same thing happens again. They really don't fully defeat the Night's King. It's more of a treaty. Uh huh. Okay. Oh man, I could. Oh, God, that's a tough one. That really Well, is. also, something to think about is a character on the A-list who's one of the big three, and your thoughts on that character living or dying. Right. Can you see Jorah Mormont living in a world where that character is not? I got to stop you one second. I just so I, I want to leave people away. Um, you got to watch YouTube. There's a, there, there's a funny bit on YouTube. We just top in like Jorah Mormont Khaleesi. I think all the time she says Khaleesi, it is hysterical. <laughs> Khaleesi, Khaleesi, Khaleesi! It's great. I love Eaglen. He, he, he's great. Oh, bro, he's fucking, he's so good. He's so good. Uh, he's, he's probably one of the top five actors in the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what? I'm going to say Jorah Mormon dies. I don't want him to. I love Jorah Mormon, but... Ah, uh, man. His whole purpose right now is Khaleesi. to protect... Yeah, protect one character, so... There it is. Um, push comes to shove. I'm going to say he dies also. And then I'll give you another reason why I think that. Okay. Ah, wait a minute. Oh, man. You know what? It, oh, my God. This is, so, this is tough. Now, cause now I'm second guessing myself. Well, let me tell you how I think he dies. He either dies one of two ways. Protecting Khaleesi. More likely, I think he dies fighting the Night King. Getting John out of harm's way because he knows that Khaleesi loves John and he accepts finally, and this is his whole character arc, he finally accepts he's in the friend zone. Well, I don't want to go too far into things with characters. I was going to bring this up at a certain time, maybe for another time. I will let me bring it up at another time. All right. Uh, but just maybe real quick, I'll give a little teaser to it. And I was doing a lot of thinking on this. Will people's opinions of John and will someone like Jorah be more willing to save him because of who he is to make it up to Rhaegar Targaryen? Yes. They will, maybe they will look at him as the prince's son. I, I, I was going to bring it up in another podcast, but. Yeah. And I've always said that Jamie's going to do something for John, but maybe even like he just started now saying, you know, Jorah will save John, but maybe because he, not only because he thinks Danny's in love with him, but more so than maybe. This is Rhaegar Targaryen's son. This is our duty now is to save him. I buy that. I actually like that a lot. But along those lines, I I do think he dies then. Because (sighs) 
House Mormon is secure with the young Liana, and he makes right his his crimes that made him in exile. Mm-hmm. I just does he does he get Longclaw back at some point? Is he gonna take Longclaw back? I think he uses it at one point, and I think he dies with it in his hands. But then he says that he says to John, it's yours. My father wanted you to have it. Keep it. My father wanted you to have it, but he didn't know you were a goddamn Targaryen. Keep it. Your, keep it for your kids. Yeah. So yeah, I guess Jorah's gonna die. It makes the most sense for that character arc. Yeah, I get a tough call, but I think he's gonna. Yeah, I guess. Plus, think of the things that he's done. You know, the betrayal of Daenerys so long ago. Like you think he made up for it, and yeah, he kind of did. But there's more to his redemption arc. There's his personal stuff, and generally, people on the redemption arc. Once they redeem themselves, that's that's curtains for them. Even Steven. Yeah, I think dies is most likely. I don't want him to. I, I like Jorah a lot, but dies. The tragic character Jorah moment. I think this one's kind of, I don't want to say it's easy, but Davos Seaworth, I'm going to say lives. Although, I am saying Tormund lives. I don't think that they both live. Tormund's a goner. Davos lives. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm not going to change it, but I think I might be wrong with Tormund. But yeah, Davos, Davos I'm going to say, lives. He's just a good dude, you know? He put up with Stannis for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's kind of a tough one. Brienne of Tarth. Ooh. <sighs> Try to ignore the, the rumors circulating about her. Really? What rumors? One of the... Script leaks have, uh, I, mean, I don't want to say, but she dies for somebody else that... Uh, Hell yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. See, I, I need to see her, oh, God. Ugh. On the flip side, her character's been through so much shit, how ugly she is, how much she's been ridiculed. It's more likely that she lives. Oh, this is- Part of the King's Guard or Queen's Guard for whoever sits the throne at the end. I'm going to uh, say she lives. Oh, God, please not Sansa, please. That's all I care about. Yeah, that would suck. <sighs> this, is, this is a very tough one. Toughest yet? Tougher than Jorah? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. And it's funny because you care so little for her. <laughs> yeah. I oh do too. I don't God. care. I honestly don't care if she lives or dies, but I think she'll live. I think so too, unfortunately. Gun to your head, you saying she lives? Yeah, gun to my head, I think she lives. But not be as far as she dies, but push comes to shove, I think she lives. All right. Let's do a gimme. Let's do a gimme before we do another tough one. Rest our brains a little bit. Melisandre. Oh, she dies. Fucking dead up. She's been waiting to die. Yeah. She's wanted reasons to die. <laughs> yeah. How does she die, though? For bonus points. Hmm. Something to do with the Night's King, maybe? Or Davos? No, nah, I think she's going to do something with the war. You think she's a, you think she's a good guy at the end? I don't know, say good guy. You know, you go around sacrificing people, but... Well, that's how I know she dies. She's burning yeah. people to death. <laughs> yeah. She does. I know who you're going to say next. Who? That's a tough one. Who, who am I going to say? The Hound. Yeah. <laughs> good one, dude. Nice, yeah. Uh, Sander Cougain. It's another one I can see go both ways. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say lives, though. His torment will be to live. He's going to live. He hasn't really done anything to thematic justice. To die. Yeah, he hasn't done anything to deserve death. He ran down that kid at the beginning of the show, but... And he knows, the thing is, he knows that, he knows that that was wrong. He knows he was doing that just because that's his duty, that his job was to do that. Right. And that's his, and that's going to be his torment. He's not going to live, he's not going to die. He's going to live through that. He's going to live through his dying days when he's older, that this is what I was. And it's not that he made up for that, but he left Joffrey's service. He saved Arya at the Red Wedding, and he almost died. He was left for death, and he was brought back, and now he's fighting the good fight. So, yeah, I think he lives. Plus, he's another fan favorite, and some fan favorites got to live. For me, this next one's a no-brainer, I think, as much as I like this character. Young Theon Greyjoy, the ward of Eddard Stark, dead up. Yeah, I think he dies. I'd have to think. He's a, he's a goner. I think Euron kills him, but I think he saves Yara. You know, do you think he has one more House Stark save in him, or no? I want to say no because I feel like his path is not going to cross with them again. I, I think he's heading for he's heading for the Iron Islands, right? He's heading mm-hmm. for, and I think that'll be it for him. I don't think he comes back from there. A few years ago, before season six, 
That is, I would have said his arc would lead him back to Ramsay Snow. You know, he would die, but he would also have his vengeance on Ramsay. But Ramsay wasn't really... Ramsay was like a black hole that he fell into. Ramsay was not an antagonist for him. Ramsay was a punishment for bad decisions mm-hmm. he made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He brought that on himself. He brought Ramsay on himself. Ramsay is a force of nature, not as a bad guy. So I, I get that now, looking back. But as far as Euron, that's more of a family thing. And there's a lot of fucked up shit in his family. And I think the stuff that Theon has done, he deserves death. Even though everything he went through is reek. It's that redemption arc again. Mm-hmm. He still has sins he has to pay for. He's going to do the right thing. He's going to redeem himself. But the redemption is just going to be saving Yara. I do think Euron is going to kill him and then move on to bigger things. Any thoughts on that or, or uh, differing opinion of, of how he goes? you think he does have another Stark save left in him? I was thinking about that before. I was thinking if he comes back and... Who would he save, though? Bran? Exactly. Does he have to be back there for Bran? I would say yes, except Bran's, <sighs> Bran's such a fucking weirdo now that like I don't think that any... Yeah. Any fucking reunion brand is going to really have any meaning whatsoever. <laughs> I think uh, I saw that day that Ramsey took your cock. It was hey. beautiful. <laughs> you know what? I think he dies, but I think he dies back in Westeros with the Starks. I think he's got one more Stark saving him. Okay. I could buy that. Or one more Stark reunion in him. Yeah. Or something, you know, Stark meeting. I want him to, and I could buy that, but I just feel like if he does that, that means that he defeated Euron, and I don't think that he defeats Euron. Well, Euron being the next name, I mean, obviously, he dies, but does he die in the Theon storyline? Does he die part of the Iron Islands, or does he die on a bigger platform of Westeros? Is Euron the Saruman, so to speak, after defeating Sauron? When the hobbits return to the Shire and they find that Saruman has taken over the Shire and then they defeat him. You know, like that last kind of like mm-hmm. B bad guy. Mm-hmm. I think Euron's fate is more like that. I think his fate is entwined with the bigger Westeros and not just the Iron Islands. But he does die, you know. Yeah, I agree. Why put him in there if he didn't have a bigger fate? I'm going to say that Jamie kills Euron Greyjoy. Strong possibility. Well, you think he dies, right? Yeah. Guy like that's not gonna fucking live. This is another gimme, I think. Samuel Tarly. Ah, dude, he lives. Definitely lives. I'd say of any character on any of these A, B, C, or D, he's probably the easiest gimme for someone that lives. Definitely. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I put about the B list. I don't know if you want to comment on it, but the Night King. Ah, he's dead. Dead meat. <laughs> Gotta die, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely the show's version of the Night King is gonna die. Yeah, John kills him. I can, yeah, I, yeah, I can. You know, I was watching um, something that was overlooked. I think was the, uh, season uh, seven last night in the episode five when uh, Sam and Gilly, when Gilly's reading about all the uh, the Maester Road and everything, and mentions you know Prince Rhaegar had an annulment. Right after that, Sam says, you know, here I am trying to find out how to defeat the Night King, and all I'm getting is. All this other nonsense, but being me while he was listening, had to defeat the Night King, was paying attention to what she was saying about Rhaegar and Lyanna, and that's his son, John's right. like the Night King, has to. Yeah. And then he says to Bran, t- he says to Bran that John is going to lead the, the fight. It's got to be John. If Sam says it, it's John. I agree with you. I think it is John, but let's say just for argument's sake. If it's not John, it's Jamie. Really? Yeah, I've always said that. Yeah. It's not John, it's Jamie. Not Bran. No. <laughs> no, because Bran is the Night King. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, I'd say uh, if it's if it's if it's not John, it's Jamie. I agree. Jamie saving John at the end or something. All right, so that's it for the B list. I'm trying to think anybody on here that I would have been okay with dying in season seven. I guess Tormund, um, Melisandre, I would have been okay with. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Okay. So the A list, the main cast, and five of these guys are making $500,000 an episode for Game of Thrones. Cersei, Jamie, Tyrion, Daenerys, and Jon Snow all making $500,000 an episode. Craziness. I want to save the big three for the end. Now, oh, fuck it. Cersei Lannister, dead. Goner. Definite dead. Definite. Well, we've talked about it a lot before, how she dies. 
So I guess, I don't know if we should really do bonus points for how she dies. I don't think it's Jamie, though. You're on Greyjoy. Yeah, I think it's Euron. Jamie's too obvious. Right. I've always thought that. Anyway, at first, of always Tyrion is too obvious, and then you think, oh, Jamie's younger brother, blah, 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 because he was born after. But it's almost got to a point where Jamie's too obvious now. It's mm-hmm. got, I think it's Euron. I think Arya is too obvious, then, too. You know? Yeah, you know, Arya, you know, dressed as a, you know, with a different face on. Mm-hmm. Possibility. But I think it's Euron. You reap what you sow, and you want to lay in bed. Ugh, man, you don't want to get in bed with your own Greyjoy. Yeah. If she didn't know, she's just like, hey, it's a stupid Greyjoy. All right. This one's bittersweet for me, but I'm going to say he dies. Jamie Lannister, the truest knight in the realm as of season eight. He dies. Yeah, Jamie dies. Yeah, that, yeah, he dies. Yeah, uh, he dies. You go back and forth on him a lot more than I do. Yeah. I do, because still a part of me thinks that maybe he could be the the house of the Lord Commander. Yeah? Yeah. How about now? Who do you think's more likely? Because you you said that Jorah dies also, right? Yeah. I'm going to say Jamie's more likely to die or more likely to be the 1,000th Lord Commander? Lord Commander. Okay. Goes back to that handshake with John. Sides will switch. John, Jamie will come, the the Night's Watchman. John will be the Knight. You know, I, I do like that, but I've been thinking lately with Jamie and how he ridiculed John for joining the Night's Watch. His character at that point in time was someone who didn't seem to take vows seriously. And he went on to lead basically the same life of service as the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Same thing he was knocking John for, except, you know, rapists and murderers. But if you look at the King's Guard that he was Lord Commander of, not the greatest guys in the world. So maybe that's the, the irony of that handshake. Don't get me wrong, I do think Jamie and John have unfinished business together. A lot of interaction in season eight. But I don't know. I, I just think he dies. I don't think he ends up Lord Commander. I think actually the Night's Watch is no, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's not done away with completely. I don't know. It'll be interesting though. I hope he lives. He might live. You know, I hope I hope I'm wrong with him. Alright, let's do the three Starks. Let's start with Bran. You go first, bud. I don't know if I want to touch this one. Oh my god, it's so tough. I, I, I almost feel like one of them has to die out of the three, have to die. I feel if all three live, I think you're kind of getting like a really, at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, wouldn't it, surp- it wouldn't surprise me, but I just feel like one of them has to die. Yeah, but the only thing with Bran is I feel like, is he really even alive now? Like, he's such a fucking robot. And what is his fate if he does live? What does he do? What is he doing now? Why? Why is he even still around right now? Like, what fucking purpose is he serving? You're you're, you're definitely pushing me to die. He's got to yeah. be the start that dies. I don't know if I'm going to say dies, but I can't say lives. <sighs> That's live or die. It's a live or die, dude. It's live or die. You have to pick. It's a live or die. All right, he dies. Brand dies. It's like the three-eyed raven said. He's like, you'll never walk again, but you will fly. I think he dies. He gets tossed off a fucking cliff in his wheelchair. <laughs> All right. Are we sure? Are we sure Bran's going to die? We both just agreed that he's going to die. Is that is that legit? Think he's going to die? Is it that he's going to die or is it that we think he's going to die or that we don't think he's going to live? I don't see what purpose he serves. I don't see what purpose he serves now other than to tell John the truth about himself. But once we're past that, like he's done absolutely zero I don't see him, like, coming up with new skills to, you know. Like, what the fuck is he doing? He's sitting at the fire, like, like, why did he come back to Winterfell? What the fuck's his deal? I really don't want him to live, because I just don't like him. I gotta I got stick with death. I gotta stick yeah. with it. I gotta stick with it. He tries to fight the Night King. <laughs> he dies. John! John! <laughs> Hodor is raised as a white, and he fucking yeah. <laughs> kills, him. He kills him. I got you, you bastard. Yeah. Hodor. <laughs> oh lord <laughs> breaks his neck alright Arya Stark lives yeah she lives too popular people would fucking riot if she died There'd be riots in fucking Northern Ireland where they're filming this shit she lives but does she become a noble lady so that would be a noble lady nah she'll be like the next wandering wolf alright here we go the big four nah I'm kidding the last of like the minor A characters we'll say your girl lives yeah she lives <sighs> pains me. God, I just, I just want to live in a world where I can set it, be here and be like, she dies, and I know she's going to die. God, she, if she dies, how, how? Be throwing a party. She's going to live. 
she's not going to be in too much danger for the rest of the show. She's no, going to she... probably spend most of it running from castle to castle, and uh, she's going to make out real nice yeah. when all is said and done. Sansa Stark. Ugh. All right, here we go, the big three. Who's the big three? Oh, T- I forgot about Tyrion. Yeah. Wow, I forgot yeah. about him. Speaking of which, do you want to start with Tyrion, or do you want to start with Daenerys? Start with Tyrion. Um, he lives. Yeah, I'm going to say he lives. The only reason I'd see him dying is if the rumors that have been going around are true. Right. He'll have to settle for those rumors. Yeah, I don't want to believe those. I don't want to, I don't want to either. He lives. He's another one like Arya. He's too popular of a character who's been around too long, been through too much stuff to not make it to the end. Here it is, John. You have to go on record. Daenerys Targaryen. Does she live? Does she die? She's going to die. Yeah, I'm going to say dies also. I'm going to say dies also. And you know what, bro? If she lives, I'm putting the blame squarely on you. I'm saying she dies based only on things you have told me about her. Like what? Her being Nisa Nisa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's expected that she wins the Iron Throne. Right. So therefore she won't. And you know what? The entire series, book and show, she's alluded to the fact that a queen must rule for her people, right? She must do what's right for her people. Mm -hmm. And I guess the biggest example of that so far in both the books and the show is her marrying Hisdar Zolorak, which was a much, much more uncomfortable situation for her in the books than it was in the show, but she did it anyway. She's willing to take the bullet. And I think her character arc at this point is, is she willing to take the ultimate bullet? For the people that she wants to rule. Does it go down like Jon Snow stabbing her through the heart? I don't know if he'll do that exactly, but something akin to that. Mm -hmm. Where it's a choice she makes, a sacrifice she chooses to make. So, yeah, I'll say dies. I'll tell you what. This last one, I'm going to, whatever you say, I'm going to agree with. Jon Snow. Aegon Targaryen, the seventh of his name, the true ruler of Westeros, will not die. He lives. Lives, gotta live. He's gonna live. I'm telling you, he's living. I, I, I have to go. I cannot back down from that. I, I've been saying it for a while. He will not die again. He will live. All right, give me three reasons why he lives. I know George likes to go against tropes, but he's almost conveniently written John as the same character almost as Aragorn. Now I'm gonna go with that fact. Okay. And there's just too much stuff in the books that still lead him up to be king. And I think the biggest reason is he already died. Yeah. Now, that doesn't work for Beric Dondarrion, but Beric Dondarrion is not Jon Snow. Right. Yeah, I'm going to say Jon Snow lives. Lives, and an... does he marry Sansa at the end? You know what? I, I want him to not so bad that I'm just going to say no, and I'm going to say it's ridiculous. That being said, yeah, it's possible, dude. Here's what... It... I've been thinking, I always think of it on and off with that. The latest thing I've been thinking of with, of with it being on is, okay, John and Danny have a kid. So that's the Targaryen kid. So if Danny dies, you're still going to have a Targaryen. Right. Okay, Bran can't, Bran can't have kids. San, you no. need a star. Mm -hmm. You need a star. So does John and Sansa have a kid, and that's like star. That's like the kid that John is, but legit, from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Okay. I really don't like Sansa, though. I really don't want that to happen. I can't stand her either, but it's the only way I can fathom her being queen if she's married to the king. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? I mean, everyone would, like, you would have to be only, like, five people with power that live at the end, or some sort of known people, like, would actually say, yeah, let's have Sansa as the queen. Who would actually make her queen? Well, it's got to be a situation where it's like, oh, man, it's, listen, it's either Sansa or Edmure. <laughs> I think if that's the situation, then going back to the D list, little Karstark, little Umber are dead. Because if Sansa and Edmure are the only options, there's no other High Lords left. Sansa, you know, I, I think part of her arc in Season 8 will be her becoming a good ruler. You know, not playing the little finger politicking games, the survival, ruling and surviving, but actually ruling. Maybe she learns a little bit of that from Daenerys. But I, I would think that's her character arc for this season is how she did during the Battle of the Blackwater. Keeping, it was a brief scene, but keeping all those minor noble ladies and children that were in the Red Keep. Gentle mother. Right. She just starts, yeah. she just, she just starts singing songs. Everything's all right. <laughs> Joffrey's fighting bravely. Let's sing a song. And then she bounces. But, you know, along those lines, she's not going to fight the Night King, but she'll be 
little Stark, little Umber, you know, Lyanna Mormont, they'll be looking to her for guidance, and I think she becomes a good ruler at that point in time. All right, with this list, the A-list, John. I forgot about Ghost, he dies. Oh, Ghost. Is he still alive? <laughs> yeah, Ghost is going to die, obviously. Ben Anthem Weiss have a thing against Direwolves. I guess just go from the A-list, right? Yeah, because nobody in the B-list or the C-list. All right, so here's what I want to ask you. Going through everybody in the A-list, can you give me, not the odds, how about on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely they are to be sitting the Iron Throne at the end of Game of Thrones? So Cersei? 1. Okay. Jamie, 1. Okay. Bran? 1. Okay. <laughs> Arya? 1. <laughs> All right, how about Sansa? Shit. Eight. Ooh, wow. Really? The only way that's happened is if Jon and Daenerys both die. How about Tyrion? Uh, six. Okay. Daenerys? Six. Okay. Jon? 9.5. Okay. Nine. We'll call it nine. All right. Sansa with an eight, huh? I'm prepping myself. I'm prepping myself. The more I try to say it, that's going to happen, the less likely I'll get as upset. But it's not going to happen. I'll be so upset if she's the queen. Queen with, with not like John being the king. If, if she had to marry John, I'll live up to it. But she's like the, like the ruler and she's the ruler. Ru- oh, God, kill me. Well, I'd rather, I'd rather have the Night King be the king. <laughs> I'd rather, rather have him just sit the Iron Throne. Well, how about the Night King? What, what's the Night King? <laughs> ah, two. All right. It's better than Cersei. Gendry is seven. Really? Yeah, he's he's up there. Actually, I would say like six or seven of Gendry. So Gendry, not likely, but it wouldn't shock you. You wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, right. That means like everybody on the A-list has to die for Gendry to be there. Well, because like, they're going to say, oh, he's Robert's son. He should be the king. He's Robert's son. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, Ari and Bran aren't interested in it. Jamie's not interested in it. Yeah, I guess it's not that far-fetched. Even though Gendry's on the fucking C-list, right? Yeah. All right, not bad, dude. Uh, just to recap, Ali's car Stark. Both say she lives. Ned Umber, we both say he lives. Jan Royce, we both say he dies. Holland Reed, we both say he's not going to be in the show, but if he is, he dies. Harry Strickland dies. Ed Tollett dies. Wyman Manderley dies. Robert or Galbart Glover, whichever one he is, he dies. Sweet Robin, we both say lives. Quiburn, we both say he dies. Mira Reed, we both say she lives. Yara Greyjoy, we both say she lives. Grey Worm, we both say he dies. Greg McLean, we both say he dies. Gendry, we both say he lives. We finally differ on Bronn. I think he dies. You think he lives. Varys, we both think he dies. Miss Sandy, I think lives. You think she dies. Uh, Leanna Mormont, we both think lives. Edmure Tully, unanimous decision. He lives. Beric Dondarrion dies. Tormund, we differ on. I'm saying he lives, though I think I regret that. You say he dies. Both say Jorah Mormont dies. Dado Seaworth lives. Bran of Tarth lives. Sander Clegane lives. Melisandre dies. Theon dies. Euron dies. Samwell lives. The Night King dies. And uh, I think in the A-list we agreed on everything also. Cersei dies. Jaime dies. Bran, uh, Bran, Bran dies, which is weird, but I can't say that he lives. Arya Stark lives. Sansa lives. Tyrion lives. Daenerys dies. Jon lives. So we're pretty much in agreement with the exception of uh, Tormund and Miss Sandy and... uh, Bronn. Oh, Bronn. Yeah, Bronn. Interesting, John. Interesting. Same frame of mind, but we're now on record. It's the official record. Cannot change this. I'll mail a copy to the uh, Library of Congress so that it can't be messed with. All right, cool. Cool. So you, you said you haven't been keeping up with spoilers. I was looking at a couple things today, and... Spoilers, well, not necessarily spoilers, but possible spoilers and speculation as to the events of Season 8 from here on out. And I guess what intrigued me the most looking at Watchers on the Wall was all the characters confirmed at the Dragon Pit. And it's intriguing because of where all the characters are at the end of Season 7, most of them having been at the Dragon Pit already, for all these characters returning to the Dragon Pit, what do you think that means as far as the story? Peter Dinklage, Sophie Turner, uh, Kid Harrington, Isaac Hempstead, right? Gwendolyn Christie, John Bradley. And Emily Clark was supposed to be the only there for like a few, and not, not a long time. Oh. The Wave was supposed to be there, supposed, supposedly there. Yeah, what the fuck is that about? Well, there, it's just that theory that the Wave actually killed Arya back in season, what, five or six, whatever it is, six, six. 
And then actually, the wave is actually Arya. To what end? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, wouldn't, it just, that, wouldn't that just be, like, mission accomplished? Why would she then go on and, like, try to help? <laughs> uh, Joe Dempsey, right? That's Gendry. Mm-hmm. Barry's Jamie. Oh, shit. Yeah, there it is. There's Stranger Settings as well, including Tom, whatever, and Faye, whoever, who played Jacques and Hagar and the Wave, respectively. Confused? You're not the only one. We'll try to clear things up below. Oh. Uh, okay. Washington Wall reader Ian Wade got a hold of the following photos from a friend in Seville, showing Dinklage, Macy Williams, Sophie Turner together, as well as showrunner David Benioff and Vladimir Furtick, who plays the Night King. So... They think this appears to indicate that we'll see the Night King in the Dragon Pit. However, the fact that they aren't making any effort to hide him, quite the opposite, in fact, may point to this being a misdirection. Yeah. Huh. Do you think we see the Faceless Men again? I'm hoping not. It's just, you know, as you said, to, to what end? Like, well, it doesn't fucking make any sense. Unless, like, they just show up at the last minute and they're like, oh, we're fighting with you guys because whatever the fuck. And I guess the cast had a, had a rap party. They finished filming. Really? I, th- I thought they still had some more weeks to go. Uh, Game of Thrones production is winding down in Belfast as June is likely when it all ends. Lots of laughter and tears as the cast joins in Belfast for a party before. Soon enough, everyone has to go their separate ways. Some cast members have already been sighted in the city and more are on the way. Sighted in Belfast, Amelia Clark, Kit Harrington, Lena Headey, Nicolaj, Costa Waldo, Isaac Hempstead Wright, John Bradley. However the fuck you pronounce the guy that plays Gregor Clegane. Dude, Lena Headey and fucking... Very scale looking in real life. She's getting thinner and thinner. Yeah. Seems. He's a couple of burgers. Joe Dempsey, Hannah Murray. Who the fuck is Hannah Murray? Isn't Hannah Murray the one who plays Gilly? Oh, right, right, right. Oh, we didn't mention Gilly before. We didn't mention Gilly. Oh, yeah. Lives. Lives, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Lives. Yeah. Uh, Joe Dempsey, Hannah Murray finished weeks ago alongside Sophie Turner and Seville. See, that, that's the only hope I have. That's the only hope I have for Sansa not being queen is I did read that she's finished up a little earlier than people, other people. Yeah, but you know what? That probably just means that... Sean, you're really disappointing me right well, now. I mean, I'm just thinking about, like, how... You're, you're really... Dis- you're, yeah, I was trying to feel good about this, and you're, and you're ruining it. Yeah, you know, they're going to they're gonna film all the easy stuff first. Sansa is not going to be part of a big climactic battle, I don't think. Yeah, so there's just a lot of stuff about this Dragon Pit scene. This other asshole has spinoff news. Brian Helgeland... Share spinoff news. Oscar-winning writer and producer Brian Helgeland hopes to be successful in bringing his project to fruition, but he admits it won't be easy. In an interview with Indian Express, Helgeland discusses the stress they are under, confessing there are a lot of ways to go wrong and only a few ways to get it right. They're being unusually quiet about these spinoffs. I feel like something would be announced by now, right? They all made agreement. We're waiting on George to give us the answer, the direct answer on what to do first. I'm just going to be going to the Hugo Awards this week, and then I'll give an answer. The Hugo. Yeah, just another fucking thing for him to make a decision about. Take forever. I got so many decisions here, I can't concentrate. Oh, here's what you talk. Actors' presence in Belfast indicates possibility of more flashbacks in season eight. Rhaegar. Rhaegar, right? Yeah, Rhaegar. Yeah. Yeah, really not a whole lot of fucking shit going on, man. Really not. Now, I guess I'm okay with it. I'd rather not be spoiled, but... I feel like all these characters being at King's Landing, it makes me think that the North has fallen, right? Yeah, definitely. Huh. What else do you got as far as any Game of Thrones news or thoughts? I got nothing. I guess you said there really, there really is, and there's not much. Yeah, it's a good thing we did this now and went on record with these characters because I feel like the closer we're going to get, maybe not. Maybe I mean, filming's done. So where are people going to get any news from or or, uh, or spoilers from? Any leaks, you know, if it's done, if it's wrapped up. Well, thanks for listening. You can find us facebook.com slash the promise princes. Follow us on Twitter. Hopefully George R. R. Martin speaking replies <laughs> to me after he's done that morning. The loss of his good friend Gardner Devois. I don't know why that's so funny, but it's just fucking hilarious. At Prince's Promise. Read the Westerosi Companion, the Princes That Were Promised dot com. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher. We're on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube. Like us. Subscribe to us. Tell a friend. Tell a family member. Please leave a review. It would mean the world to us. John, always a pleasure. We'll speak with you guys next time.